Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to demo this kitchen so that we can remodel it and make it look like this. We are so happy with the way it turned out and we had to save some money. So we did all the demo ourselves. We did the plumbing, the backsplash that you see there. We used all of our old appliances and we did the electrical. We subbed out all the cabinet making and the granite and we got some kids to help with the demo of the cabinets. And you'll see here in a minute, the chipping up of the floor. We cut some drywall, we cut the floor in order to run water and drain over to the center island because we wanted to put in a sink. Uh, chipping of the floor was a nightmare and cutting of the floor was a holy mess as you see here, all that mud in the background. But I'll show you how we minimize the mess and it came out really good. We're just really happy. Here's a view of the bar area. We had to actually remove a sink from that area that we never used. And the whole idea was to make this indoor kitchen look as good as the outdoor kitchen. If you didn't see this video, I'll put the link up here above. I built all of that and we just never got around to the inside kitchen. We started on, well, I started on the center island because I wanted to just see how long this was gonna take and just how much work was involved. And honestly, it was pretty manageable. I did run into some surprises uh, and not really a surprise, but how are you gonna get that electric out of there? Of course the power is off and I decided, well, I bet I can just cut it and that's exactly what I did. So stay tuned, I'll show you all the details of demoing a kitchen yourself and getting it ready for the contractor. Uh, it was a pretty fun project. Thanks so much for watching, as always, stay tuned. So all I needed for this was a floor jack. It worked really well to just pry this thing up off. It was screwed in with maybe four screws. And then I used a Sawzall with one of those all purpose blades to cut the electrical as you saw and chop this thing up into pieces so I could haul it outside. I did end up renting a dumpster, but so far, super easy. Okay, so the center island is gone and now is the job of emptying these cabinets. Uh, we really haven't done much of that. <laughs> so uh, I think I'll probably start on this side tomorrow and tear all of this out. Um, Center Island uh, came out easy, pretty much. And I really did that first to see just how difficult this is going to be. Uh, so I'll start in on this tomorrow. I'll probably do the bar and then uh, I'll save this for last. I'm opening myself up here to YouTube to see the ridiculous amount of crap that we keep in our cabinets. <laughs> I would assume that most everyone is the same when it comes to this, but holy cow, we had a lot of stuff. And you'll see next that it is piled everywhere during we this project. It piled up all over the place. This table, this one's empty, but it's about to get piled up with all of this around the corner. This table is piled up. Where I moved the center island, that is now where the doors are because the dumpster didn't show up, so I don't want to put anything outside yet. Uh, these are almost empty. I pulled the stove out to see if that's going to be a big deal, which it is not. I took a cabinet down uh, just to see, you know, it, it's not that big a deal. We've still got to empty all of that. And uh, this is all empty. All that crap is going to go on that table. And the bottoms are empty for the most part. And then uh, the bar, you gotta deal with that. <laughs> this was uh, this was really more work than I anticipated. But it'll be nice when it's done. Here's how these uppers uh, disconnect from the wall. Amazingly, the only thing holding them is those screws. I tested over here and it looks like the Original installers were looking for the studs, but they only put screws up in the top there. And then of course the whole thing is caulked in. So I'm assuming that if I cut the caulk line with a razor all the way around and undo these screws, this whole thing's gonna drop down. <laughs> I 
I used a circular saw to cut through the bulk of it and then the sawzall to get the areas that the circular saw wouldn't fit and then the sawzall to cut the actual cabinet up. It's just that melanin board. It wasn't plywood. So it cut really easy. Got some uh, neighbor kids to help out. I think they actually had some fun doing it. And by this time I had a dumpster to put everything in. Right on. <laughs> All right, everything's gutted. Gone. Gone are the cabinets. Got rid of the bar area. It's all gone. I'm going to uh, cut the back of that wall out like this. Uh, gonna get rid of those studs. And I'll put a header up here. I'll move the electric over to this wall. I'll move that switch over to pro probably this wall. And then, uh, so the switch will be, uh, you know, probably right here. Um, and then uh, that way I'll move the water over also to this wall and that way I'll be able to get the fridge back about three more inches. It's just worth the effort now that the, the wall is apart. And then that drywall will have uh, no support in that area, but I think it'll be okay. Well, these cabinets are gone. I had to put a table up just to put stuff on. Saved the sink just in case somebody wants it. That's Pretty new disposal. There's the microwave, the dishwasher, which is still fill the dishes, and uh, the stove. That's it. Ready for cutting the floor. So I gotta cut the foundation from there to there. That'll be tomorrow's project. Here I'm just cutting out the drywall to get access and then uh, access to run a pipe over for the pot filler. And then here I removed even more drywall because we're putting vents behind the appliances that go in that bar area. This ladder was really handy to set up a tent so that when I cut the floor, it didn't spray water and get dust everywhere. It took a little while to get the mix right for water to flow into the saw. It's a little bit intimidating also because it's an electric saw and you're kneeling in water. Uh, it's GFI protected, but I'd never done it before, but anyway, once I got the hang of it, it really, it just took some time. You gotta go slow. Uh, but once I got everything cut, uh, it worked out great and didn't make as much of a mess as I thought it would, but I was covered in mud, as you'll see in a minute here. This was ridiculous. Oh my God. Okay, so this was a big mess, but uh, the Visqueen worked because everything else is relatively clean for, except this area here. So uh, the water really cuts down on the dust. And uh, aside from, you know, being soaking wet, standing in a puddle of water using an electric saw, uh, aside from all that, it went pretty well. Really? No. Out. Out. And um, so anyway, what I'm going to do next is clean this up and then try to pry out some of these. Hey, stop it. And try to pry out some of these blocks. Hopefully uh, that'll go well. Getting this first one out took a little bit of prying. I got a screwdriver going there. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I don't know what it is, uh, but once I got the first one out, the rest of them came out super easy. They're heavier than I thought, and cutting them smaller would have been easier, but it's just more cut time. So this was a pretty good size for me anyway to get them all outside. And uh, I ended up having to cut it wider anyway, as you can see there, because I needed a straight run. and. If I had drawn on the floor, that would have probably been smarter. Got everything cleaned up. The stuff just cleans up like, like grout, you know, if you were grouting uh, 
if you were grouting the kitchen, it wipes up the same way. That there is the amount of concrete that came out of there. So I had to cut it again because I needed really a straight line back to that drain. So it came out pretty good. There's the, uh, uh, I found the pipe right there. Oh, it's covered in uh, mud, but oh, there it is right there. So there's the drain. You can find it in the wall here. I'm gonna have to hammer that out. What I'm gonna have to do is I've tried to cut it with a couple different saws. Nothing's really working. So I'm going to um, I'm going to drill it. I'm just gonna drill a bunch of holes until I can chop it up with a uh, hammer. What I need to do is get all of that concrete out from around that pipe because I want to tie into that pipe ideally in the vertical but as close to the drain there as possible so there's a good pitch down from where the new drain uh, or you know the new sink will be. So that's the, uh, that's the work here. It was poured in the stem wall. You can see this is an exterior wall here. So less than ideal, but it's slowly coming by drilling it and then chipping it with a hammer. So almost done. Okay, that was quite a job. With the right tools, I am confident I would be able to break out of prison. Get it up, uh, maybe 245s to get it up into the wall, and then right somewhere on the vertical tie in uh, for the drain back here. But that sucker was in solid concrete. That is, they poured concrete around the elbow. What a nightmare. And I managed not to bust that, which is shocking. That's the uh, cold water for the fridge. Right over there, right there. Anyway, on to trenching. Here's where we brought in some professionals to do the actual piping. Uh, what was existing in there is the hot and cold, the drain, and then a line that runs over to the refrigerator across the kitchen for the ice maker. And what we needed to do was tie the cold in to the, um, for the pot filler, tie in a hot and a cold to run over to the center island. And here I'll okay, show it to you. we got this done. All the plumbing's in. I need to uh, foam in around here and foam this in. Um, I'm also going to uh, tap into the cold water line that goes over to the fridge and put a water filter under the sink here. We've got the line run over for the pot filler, which I'm just gonna leave until we figure out uh, where it needs to go. I cut open the wall here so that we can put a back brace on that pot filler fitting, which is just temporarily screwed there so I don't lose it. Uh, but anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, put the, um, the dirt back in the hole after I foam around the pipes and then 
I can't concrete it until it's uh, until I chip up the tile. I got this all removed, patched the holes. Um, that's where an outlet used to be. I, I'm going to put this electrical outlet uh, right in the side there. And then I think I'm going to put some uh, half inch furring strips and then a uh, quarter inch plywood to cover up the electrical wire that is actually the supply for the center island. And, um, what are you doing? And, uh, and it'll make it look uh, at least a little, a little better. And I'll lose about an inch. Um, there's the cold water supply for the ice maker. So that's rerouted. Uh, move this switch over to here. It was here. So I got to patch this side of the wall. Um, capped this stuff. Uh, and started to... Uh, you know, patch the wall. Um, I'm going to leave this uh, because I think I have to open up this wall in order to get the wine rack in there. I don't think that there's enough clearance, but we'll see. Next up, I need to cut the vent for behind the wine fridge and the bar fridge and cut the vent for behind the uh, fridge and, um, and chip everything up and get everything out of here. I forgot to put in this uh, for a water filter under the sink here. Um, so basically what happens is the cold water comes in and uh, right here it goes over to the bar. It comes up right there. What are you doing, Billy? And then it goes, uh, the water continues through here and comes up and around and loops to here. Uh, so I can come out and go into a water filter and then go back in here and then it goes underground over to um, right there. Uh, even though that's a red pipe, um, we just ran out of blue pipe. Anyway, uh, then it goes over to here and then out for the kitchen faucet and then this one goes over for the pipe. for the. Um, for the thing in the, uh, you know, over the stove. And then this one is uh, hot uh, for under the, for the kitchen sink. And then this one here comes over and goes down and comes up over there for the bar uh, or the center island sink. Well, there you have it. Time to foam it in. Nothing's leaking, which is great. So today's progress is I got the dirt back in here, started chipping tile. I'm gonna run a different machine because that might kill me. And I've got, I, I just foamed all this in and then cut the foam flush with the wall. So that's, um, you know, cabinets can go right over that. And then I've got the plumbing moved over, the electrical run up, uh, some furring strips in here, and this is, ready for quarter inch plywood to just go over it and there'll be about a one inch pocket that'll hide the plumbing and that not to code electrical wire but what i did was i put a piece of this aluminum angle iron behind it so in case anybody put a nail through the wall uh, either where the water is or the electric it's not going to hit it and you know, once it's covered up with plywood, nobody's, you're not gonna, nobody's gonna know what's in there. There's nothing that's uh, not safe. It's just, you know, not ideal. Uh, and then I cut the vent uh, for the ace for the thing, which is right here. So that vent will go in like this, right here, and um, you know. That'll help the air conditioner or the uh, refrigerator. That'll help the refrigerator breathe. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So, aside from uh, putting the sheathing, you know, the door skin on that, um, it's ready to start chipping tile. So, pretty much uh, all day tomorrow, I'll chip tile, and then um, the last.
last thing I'll do tomorrow is fill this in with concrete and level it. So getting close. Chipping tile is awful. Even if you have the right machine, it's still awful. And the tile comes up pretty easy. The hard work is getting the thin set up so you get a flat surface again. Uh, so once again, I solicited some uh, neighborhood kids to help me out. I took a diamond uh, grinder and cut a straight line in between the transition so that I didn't cut into or chip into the tile in the uh, family room or the living room, which both border the kitchen. And then we put some Visqueen up to try to block as much dust as we could. This was super dusty. I don't think you can get the Visqueen enough. <laughs> I don't think you can make the seal look good enough. Uh, so anyway, uh, it just took literally nearly a, a whole day of just chipping and wheelbarrowing. I ended up just dumping it in the driveway. Uh, and then I actually threw it away uh, five gallon buckets at a time throughout uh, the course of a month. Uh, because the dumpster had already been picked up and I didn't want to order another dumpster just for this tile. Uh, so it worked out. It just took probably two months at a time to get rid of it. Uh, my wife actually helped do this and I did it and my daughter did it. This was a whole family event and it is slow going. You do about six inches at a time and then you got to go back over it because the machine will miss parts this was by far the hardest and most time consuming part of the whole thing. Uh, but once it was all gone, uh, then the next step here is to pour the concrete back in the hole. This was really a no brainer. And I think this was pretty much the last step before we were ready for the cabinet company to come in and start building the new kitchen. All right, it's ready for cabinets. We got the uh, trench filled in with concrete. I put this so the dogs won't walk on the wet concrete, but everything is uh, chipped up. Of course, cabinets removed. I need to put, um, actually, that's one of the pieces of plywood that'll go there. Uh, so that'll get all blocked up with plywood. And it is a uh, pretty good amount of work for since Tuesday. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. So today's progress, he got all of this up. Uh, this place, I just set the sinks in there to kind of give you an idea. Stove will be here. Um, microwave here, of course, there's the vent. That'll be glass, so we're gonna have to figure out what to do with that vent. I think I'm just going to uh, have a pipe in there that's painted black. Um, we'll see, I mean, here's where these uh, three shelves will be, right here. And then the sink space is right here, and you see the sink is centered on the window, but not centered on the cabinet and because of that angle I think it'll be fine because the dishwasher is right here and I really think you won't even notice once the once the granite's in uh, but better to have it centered on the window than the cabinet um, everything is this soft closed stuff and uh, that's pretty neat and then the cabinet doors are the same soft closed uh, tomorrow and basically that's where that sink will be and that's where that sink will be so it'll be nice uh, probably you know pretty close together but we didn't want the sink on the fridge side because you know we pile up food there on its way in and out of the fridge so figure that'd be okay uh, this giant thing goes above the fridge the cabinets that go here are not here yet these tall uppers are actually part of the center island. They form the bar top. And uh, we had a little snafu because this was 
supposed to be wood and, and it was glass. Same with that one. So these doors have to come out and be switched out with regular doors. And these are all the lowers that go over here. And then uh, I found out that this bar is pretty much uh, almost all custom made. Uh, not, it's not, you know, an actual cabinet. So it'd be pretty neat. We shall see. Here's the bar uppers. There's two of them. Uh, two two uh, taller units that will go on the wall above the bar. Anyway, progress. So that was just really a sneak peek of the next video, which will be the actual building of this new kitchen. Uh, we hired a kitchen cabinet company that uh, literally sent one guy to build the entire thing. And it was incredible how much he did from scratch and how much he did really on site based on conversation while he was building it. Because remember, we were living there the whole time. So if you liked this video and you want to see how we built the new kitchen, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, you can see there we put the, uh, that's where the hole was in the floor. That's where we cut the floor. That This is obviously under the sink where that filter is that I talked about. There's a quick view of the bar area transformed. Those appliances that are vented around the back. Um, in the next video that I post on this project, I will go ahead and show you all of this. So if you're into this stuff, please subscribe so you don't miss that one. We found these cool stools on Amazon that were the perfect width for that very little overhang that we have there. Those are actually full-size cabinets, so we picked up a ton of storage. And um, this is my pot rack. If you follow my channel, you'll see that uh, these pots ended up outside. They ended up getting all messed up. I had to re-season them. That was a whole video in itself. Uh, I cut and uh, epoxied these travertine shelves in place right here. And um, the kitchen just turned out amazing. We absolutely loved this kitchen. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. I'll show you a few more pictures here. See you next time.